Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello! My name is Sarah Palmira, and I love chatting about makeup, skincare, and all things beauty. Wow, so first of all, I want to thank you to everyone who tuned into last week's video about my Sephora favorites and sale recommendations. I did not expect that to do as well as it did, and I wanted to say that if you'd like to see more Sephora related videos, I was thinking of doing a best and worst of Sephora new arrivals page products, so let me know if you'd like to see that down below in the comments. But today, we have a very exciting video. I am going to be testing a thousand, no, over a thousand dollars worth of Hourglass Cosmetics products so that you don't have to. I'm gonna be telling you which products I think are overhyped and which ones are worth the money. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So a little bit of background on Hourglass Cosmetics in general. They are a cruelty-free luxury-based line and most of their products are vegan and a lot of them are also gluten-free. So that is really, really nice. They have a very beautiful aesthetic. Their products are pretty pricey. And so I thought, why not? I recently got onto Hourglass's PR list. They sent me quite a few products. I have quite a few products in their collection. So why not just rate all of them so that if you are like me, standing in an aisle at Sephora, looking at them and feeling extremely overwhelmed, I'm gonna help you break down which ones you should actually be adding to your cart. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna zoom you in and we are gonna get into the makeup right now. All right, so first things first, we are going to go in with some sunscreen. Now Hourglass launched the Equilibrium skincare line. This is a fancy and expensive line. This sunscreen is SPF 30 and it retails for a whopping $105. It's a chemical-based sunscreen and the hype here is that it contains phospholipids that really help boost your skin barrier and keep your skin hydrated and healthy throughout the day. It claims to help improve your skin's texture and leave it very glowing before makeup. Now, I can't really speak to it helping with your skin's texture. I don't really see any ingredients that support that claim. It's really beautiful, it's lightweight, it's glowy, it doesn't sting the eye area, which we love. It's smooth, no white cast, no pilling. It does make a great base before makeup. But at $105 for a sunscreen I'm gonna be using every single day, I can't. You're just gonna run out of it too quickly. I would so much rather get a barrier repairing serum and then a sunscreen separately. All right, so next up we have the Mineral Veil Primer. This retails for $54 and it's more geared towards oily skin in my opinion. It has a really faint purplish tint and I believe that's to help brighten the skin. Now a little bit goes a long way with this product. It's meant to help conceal redness as well as pores and just provide a really easy base for makeup to glide across. I will say, I think this is more suited to oily skin. If you're dry, I don't think this will do anything for you. It's not drying, but I also don't think it's meant to really help with dryness. A little goes a really long way, and the fact that this is a silicone primer, but it doesn't feel too silicone-y, is a bonus in my opinion. I hate the way silicone feels on my skin. Would I get the big size? Probably not. I would advise that you start with a small size. I noticed a slight reduction of pores, but nothing as extreme as some other primers that I've played with. So take that for what you will. All right, next up we have the Vanish Foundation Stick. Now I purchased this myself a long time ago and I have a love-hate relationship with this foundation stick. When I had super dry skin, this clinged to dry patches like no other. And I think if you have some significant texture concerns, I wouldn't recommend this. However, if you are normal to dry and you don't have significant dry patches or dryness concerns, it's a beautiful foundation. Customizable coverage, it leaves a super like airbrush silky finish. And it's really long lasting. It can be built up to full coverage and I love how long wearing this is. This is actually a water resistant foundation. So it really does hold up to sweat and oiliness throughout the day. And I just think it looks so beautiful on the skin. I always get compliments when I'm wearing this. It's very weightless in feeling. My recommendation would be to apply it with a brush. I'm using the Hourglass Vanish Complexion Brush here. 
these brushes hourglass brushes are absolutely gorgeous are they a necessity maybe not but they are really beautiful really smooth really soft if you want to invest in a cruelty free set of brushes that's going to really feel high end these are it as you can see, gorgeous finish on the skin. And of course I chose today to film and I am struggling with a little bit of allergies. So if my eye is watering, just ignore it. Just, just ignore it. Next up, we have the Vanish Concealer. I was sent this and as soon as I saw the shade, which is the shade Pearl, I thought, ooh, that might be a little bit light. However, it's actually the perfect pinky shade to neutralize dark circles. What I really like about this concealer is that it's extremely lightweight and full coverage. It doesn't crease, which is amazing, and I find that for me personally, I don't have to set it, and a little goes a really, really long way in terms of building up that coverage. Just look at how it's playing well under the eye. I haven't found the need to set this, and it is water resistant, and we will find that out because I am my eyes are watering. You know what? Now that I'm, oh God, you know what? Oh, I'm realizing this. It's the sunscreen. I have tried to film this video twice now, twice. Every time I get to this step, my eyes start to water. Okay, now we know. Now you know. <laughs> I was like, why? Every time I'm trying to film this hourglass video, my eye just goes crazy. I think it's the sunscreen. Now I put my sunscreen around my eye area because it's really important to protect that area. And I think it's the test of a good sunscreen. A good sunscreen shouldn't sting the crap out of your eyes, shouldn't get into the eye area. We need to protect this delicate area. What are we supposed to do, you know? And so there, now that's my answer. Not all sunscreens work around the eye area. And unfortunately, in my opinion, the Equilibrium one just failed that test, but that's okay. We are learning it the hard way. Back to the concealer, however, I would recommend this. It gives a beautiful lifted appearance to the eye area. Next up, we have a new launch. This is the Hourglass Vanish Blush Sticks. Now, these are a cream to powder formula, which is super interesting. I love these and I think these are great. I've just swiped it here along my cheekbone area. And this is said to really help minimize pores. And I have to say, I agree. I think these look so beautiful on the skin. They're not sticky like most creams. So if you don't like cream blushes because they're not long lasting and they're sticky, these are neither. They're very long wearing. They're not sticky. They're not heavy. They feel weightless and they're long lasting. Did I just mention long lasting? Take a shot every time I say long lasting. I love these. They give like, um, a sheen to the skin, but not really a do. I don't know if you can tell. And I'm gonna swatch all of them for you right now. So as you can see, beautiful packaging, same packaging as the Vanish Stick. First up is Loyal, which I wore in this video. It's a rosy nude. Then we have the shade Adore, a vibrant berry. Revel, a warm scarlet. Devoted is a dusty rose color. Then we have Sacred, which is like a coral peach. And lastly, Wonder is more of a soft peach. I found all of the shades to be incredibly smooth and pigmented and I love the variety of shades here. You have your berries, your nudes, and more bright colors. Now on this side, I'm gonna go in with a favorite of mine. I purchased this myself. This is the Ambient Strobe Lighting Blush in the shade Brilliant Nude. These are not sold on Sephora anymore, I don't think, but you can get it on Hourglass's website. This is amazing. If you have a skin tone similar to mine, this shade in particular is like a blush, bronzer, and highlight into one. All of these blushes come beautifully marbled and they're all very unique. And I love that you have a little highlighter in here as well as your blush. It just really creates a multi-dimensional sheen. And when I'm lazy, I just pop this on and I'm done. I've sculpted my face. It's like a bronzer, like a blush bronzer vibe. And I'm really here for it. These are expensive, I think they're worth it because they're extremely finely milled. They don't catch on texture and they don't look like powders. They just melt into the skin. And this is where Hourglass to me shines. Hourglass powders are on another level. They are buttery soft. They are almost creamy. So this I highly recommend. Speaking of bronzer powders, I picked up the Diffused Bronze Light. This is a more cool toned version in their bronzing section. Now I will say, 
I don't love the small size. I thought it was going to be, I guess, a little bigger for $26, but I think if I was trying to budget my money, I would just spring on the full size here. I think this is really good for lighter skin tones because it's more cool toned. And again, I will say, these bronzers are incredibly forgiving. They're just very, very flattering. They don't catch on any areas. And as you can see, I've done half of my face and you can see a definite warmth. I'm gonna add a little bit on the other side as well so that you can see. If you're lazy, if you have a heavier hand, these are extremely forgiving. And so they definitely get a thumbs up from me. This is the strobe light powder in the shade Euphoric Light. Again, beautiful, finely milled, doesn't emphasize texture. And I love this because I find that it really can be built up for a blinding highlight on a night out. And I just really think it's beautiful. Ironically, I tried the stick version of this and returned it because I did find that it clinged to pores. So the powders really, really shine in my opinion. These and the blushes are just, they just have my heart, truly. I've never found a powder highlight that doesn't cling to pores as much as this one. Okay, speaking of powders, this is the Ambient Lighting Palette. These powders here are meant to reflect the light away from the skin. They are finishing powders and not setting powders. So the way I like to use it is I take their brush and I just run it back and forth throughout all three powders and then just run it and glide it across the skin and I take it pretty much everywhere. And as you can see, it does gently set the face and it literally looks like I've gone over my face with a filter, but I haven't. These are so unique and I highly recommend them. Do I recommend the larger palettes with a bunch of different ones? No, because I think the pans are really small and what ends up happening is the powders all kind of start to get into the other pans and it gets kind of messy. I would just go for the trio on its own, but I definitely think these are so beautiful, especially if you don't need your powder to ultra mattify you. These are just so gorgeous and I feel like they really do add something to the skin. Next, I was also sent the translucent setting powder. Now I personally hated the smell of this, which is why when I purchased it, I actually returned it. But I will note that the larger size has this little H here in which the powder is dispensed from, and I don't smell it as much. But I, at the time, I could not handle it. While I think this is more of a powder that's geared towards drier skin, because it doesn't leave you with like a powdery look, I didn't really notice that it helped with the wear time of my makeup at all. And it had a little bit of shimmer particles in it and a little bit of flashback. If you need a mattifying powder that is not going to give you flashback, this is not it. And so personally, I was a little bit let down. That being said, it does kind of remind me of the Charlotte Tilbury powder that's very, very you know, airbrushed and very light, but I prefer the Charlotte Tilbury one. I think it does a better job of not only not making me look matte or flat, but increasing the longevity of my makeup, which is why I sadly have to say, this to me is not worth the money. All right, now before I do my eyes and lips, I'm going to set my face with the Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. Now this was a very unique product. This has such a finely dispensed mist that I almost felt like it wasn't working and it wasn't misting my face, but it was. But I find that this did help with the wear time of my makeup and it just helped everything melt together and kind of give me this beautiful glowy sheen. So I love an alcohol-free setting spray that doesn't look too greasy, but also increases longevity. I just thought this was so, so good. Hopefully it lasts me a long time because it is pricey, but I do really recommend it. Now let's do a little zoom in before we move on to the rest of the makeup. So this is what the face is looking like. I've been really impressed with how the concealer looks underneath the eyes and just how the base looks in general. It's very skin-like, it's not clinging to any areas, it's not emphasizing the texture of my skin, and my skin overall just looks very healthy and radiant, even on the powdered side. And that's where Hourglass really shines, in my opinion. That's the powdered side, this is the cream blush side, and then straight on, and then you can see how they look from far away as well. 
Okay, now for brows, I'm gonna go in with the Arch Brow Sculpting Pencil and the Brow Volumizing Gel. These are both in the shade Soft Brunette. So for the Brow Arching Pencil, this has a nice little spoolie on one end, pretty standard. So I find that with this, it's not really creating individual brow hairs, but rather more of a soft color around your brow, almost as if you filled it in with a powder. And while it is really soft, I don't find it particularly long wearing and it's a little bit stiff. So I did lose a couple brow hairs, which I didn't love. I'm setting that with the volumizing gel. I really like this because it is setting my brows. So it reminds me of the Benefit Brow Wiz, but with a little bit more hold and staying powder. On to eyes, I actually purchased the Scattered Light Shadow myself. This is a gorgeous cream and it has glitter in it, but it's not chunky glitter. It's more of a refined glitter and it doesn't have fallout, which I love. This is in the shade Burnish, which is like a copper. And I like applying it with my fingers. It's super pigmented. I already love and recommend these. They can be built up for a night out or just applied with a brush for every day for a really, really soft look. I have notoriously oily eyelids, and I find that with these, the wear time is excellent. I never have to worry about priming or powdering my lid, which is what we want. And they can be easily blended out with a brush as well. You do get a little playtime with this before it sets, and I really, really love them. They just look more sophisticated than they are. I've done one wash over the lid and it looks like I've worked way harder. Now for lashes, this is the Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. I have applied my tried and true Heron Make Long and Curl Mascara on this side. This is a waterproof mascara, but I absolutely love it. It's my holy grail for leaving my lashes lifted and really just maximizing what I have. And I'm gonna compare it to this one so that we can really see the difference. Does this stand at the level of my holy grail mascara? Is it better? Let's find out. This mascara has a really nifty little plasticky wand, which I really like because I find that it helps me get closer to the root and separate the lashes. But what I don't like about it is as I try to add layers of mascara, it, it gets kind of clumpy and I don't like it. And I don't mean clumpy in a good way. The, the lashes almost start to form and come together and then I can't seem to separate them. This is my Holy Grail mascara side and this is the Hourglass side. Nothing wrong with it overtly, but it's just not as good. So no, it's a no for me. Next, we have the Ultra Slim High Refillable Lipsticks. These are $36. Obviously, the packaging is gorgeous and I really do like these in the shade when I was it's such a perfect gorgeous nude the pigment of these is beautiful and you know the fact that it's a smaller applicator really allows you to be precise I don't find that the color feathers at all it's very smooth very creamy but it is expensive for the price per ounce but in my opinion it really does apply like a high-end lipstick I find that it stays really really smooth while being matte and that is very difficult to do and the refills are cheaper than the actual full packaging but I do really really like these and I recommend them I just think the colors are so beautiful and you really do get a high-end feel when you apply these I'm going to apply a gloss over top these glosses retail for about $30 and in my opinion no they just feel like a regular gloss and they're sticky and I I personally just don't like sticky glosses and I feel like this is very, very dupable. If you love lip gloss, you're a collector and you want nice packaging, go for it. But in my opinion, I would pass. I was also sent the number 28. This is like a plumping lip oil. Now, I don't like the packaging. I find that it pumps way too much out the gate. I get more product than I want. This is supposed to be like a pigmented lip treatment. And I do really like how plumping it is. When you first apply this, it's a little bit sticky. But as it sinks in, it really does kind of give you the most beautiful barrier and lip shine and plumpness. It's really, really pretty. And I feel like it shields you from the elements like the wind, just like a traditional lip balm does. So I really do like it. I just wish that they would get it together 
with the dispensing system because I don't love that. But I do think that this is a really nice treatment if you want to splurge. It is really, really quite beautiful. And I do think that my lips look almost a little bit bigger, a little bit plumper, which is never a bad thing. Last but not least, we have the Velvet Story Lip Creams. These are brand new. And when I first got this, I thought, this is very small. What is going on? It's described as a featherweight lip mousse that delivers a diffused, soft focus, matte finish with a velvety texture for comfortable wear. And I thought, okay, let's see how it works, you know? And after trying them, I will say, they are very matte and a little does go a long way. They remind me of a Kylie lip kit, to be honest with you, but they don't feel like one. They do feel extremely lightweight. You know, oftentimes when you're doing a matte lip, you really have to prep for it, and I don't feel like I have to with this one. It really is that perfect matte lip without the sensation of that drying effect. It, these look exactly like the NYX matte lip creams. I mean, identical. But the reason I would say, okay, I think these are worth the money is because there's no scent, they're long wearing, and they just don't feel matte. So you get that beautiful look without paying the price. And so that to me, that's worth looking into. So I really do like them. I'm gonna swatch all of them for you right now. Okay, not a professional swatcher, but here we go. Pure is a pinky rose color with berry undertones. Next, we have the shade Indulge, which is a more neutral nude rose. Next, we have the shade Touch, which is what I was wearing today. It's more of a neutral beigey pink. Then we have the shade Hint, which is a lighter pink beigey nude. Then Lux is more of a rich brownie mauve color. Then Crush, a warm berry color. This was the most even color that I saw. Watched. They all look really nice, but my biggest complaint is that the shades are very, very similar and it's hard to tell them apart. I wish there were some more diverse shades in this launch. One last zoom in so you can see how everything came together. I love how beautiful the copper eyes are. Keep in mind this side is with my good mascara and this side is with the hourglass one. The lips look really hydrated too, which is such a bonus considering that it's a matte lipstick. All right, everybody, and without further ado, that completes my roundup of Hourglass products. I cannot believe we tried so many. As an overview in general, I think you should go for what they do best, and that is powder products. Their bronzers, their blushes, their highlights, their ambient powders, gorgeous. I also really have to say that I love their two newest launches, their cream to powder blush sticks, gorgeous, as well as their matte velvet lipsticks. I have to say, I am not a matte person, but it's mainly because of how they feel on my lips, and these felt very different. I was very surprised. So I hope that this was helpful. If you like videos like these, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I would love to have you. If you want more videos in which I try a bunch of products from a brand to help you save money, then let me know which brand you would like to see next. I am open to both skincare and makeup. I shall see you in my next video, hopefully, wishing you a wonderful rest of your week.